So welcome to the Vortex Garage, and today we're going to jump right into it. On our last installation of the Spitfire project, we showed the removal process for the rear quarter panel. Now today we're going to start prepping the inner structure that lies beneath there. If you recall from the last video, there were several rusted areas that needed replacement. Before we started filming this particular section, we drew out the areas we wanted to cut on the inner structure and went ahead and made these cardboard templates. So kicking things off today, we're going to begin by cutting out some steel that we'll use to repair the inner structure before we can even think about fitting the new panel. So let's jump right into it. get the plasma cutter out at this rate. That's much better. The problem is, can I do some of this freehand? All right. Well, I want to cut that off because I need to still cut this. So you can see I'm not good at freehanding things. <laughs> it's too hot for these little gloves. Alright, that looks pretty good. Cut these cool off. Grab a few more. So something we've shown you many times is if you need to replace just certain sections, take your cardboard or particle board, we make some templates, we make them in sections, we don't have to make the whole piece at once. So here you can see we've got a number of different sections. Then we've got a little piece that goes here, 
And then our final piece, see if I can hold those all in the place, our final piece goes like that, or actually probably more like this, and then folds over into our wheel well. So we've got all of our cardboard pieces that we made, and we cut out some metal pieces where we did leave ourselves plenty of room. So we've got a little excess, so there's that piece. This piece. Here's this piece. And finally, I'll have to look at my template to figure out, I think it goes like this. This piece will have to be put in the shrinker stretcher. What we're gonna do is we're gonna bend it in the brake to make the lip, and then we'll shrink it and pull it in on itself. And that way we'll have this bend all the way around. So the idea is that we'll weld this directly to here, grind that weld smooth. Same with down here. It'll weld at a 90 degree to this piece. It'll match that radius and then we'll grind it. And uh, this is all inside the quarter panel. So you can't really see it. So we don't have to get it exactly perfect, but we're gonna get it as close as possible. That is within reasonable time uh, so that we know it looks nice. And then we'll start cutting these pieces out and stitching them together. So, so what we wanna do first before we start putting these uh, new panels in that we made is uh, this section here, although it is rusted away in some areas, is still connected to the bottom part of our trunk as well as our rear valance here. And uh, we want to go ahead and just get rid of these spot welds, get that piece loose. So what I'm going to do is probably just come in and cut along the edge here, leaving this intact, and then kind of use the belt sand or whatever, uh, get, get rid of that and make it nice and clear. The idea being when we come in with our new pieces, I want to lay them in, tack them, and then use that same process we did for the floor pan, where we come in and cut at a 45 degree angle and push and weld those in as we go and remove the old piece. That'll make cutting and welding it in a lot simpler instead of having the cut, grind, fit, etc. So let's start with our grinder, our cutoff wheel, which I think is dying, but this is some pretty weak metal here, so. So it's a little hard to see, but up underneath the uh, floor pan for the trunk kind of goes up quite a bit and then it juts up right here, which is why this hole's here. So to remove this piece, there's going to be some spot welds that are incredibly difficult to see, but they should be along here somewhere. So there's going to be a bit of a difficulty getting that piece out. And in fact, our cut line goes against that as well. So that's something to look out for. It's, uh, let me see if I can show you with this camera. So if you look there, if you look behind, look at how that floor goes and how it kind of curves up and around. So that's going to add a little bit of difficulty to cutting this away because we just don't know quite where that is. And I normally say if you grind a little bit, you can see the spot welds. Let me get a roll lock. I mean, we already did roll lock some of this and by golly, I don't see any spot welds. So interesting to see how that goes. We'll just work to, to cut it away and, and go from there. So I can see through, I know that we've got good here. So I'm going to cut here. Looks like it's right about here. All I'm doing, all I'm doing with the cutoff wheel is letting it kind of very lightly touch where that floor piece starts. And now I can kind of see through there and see it and then find the back edge of it as well. And then we'll be able to kind of cut around that. So again, the this piece, the way it juts down here, actually the seam for this bottom panel is more around here and then it gets closer and then it rides the edge here. So let's use our Rolex, see if we can expose any of the spot welds.
possibly one right there. So I don't know how well you can see that, so I'll try to move this camera. But right here, 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 here are spot welds. And that we were able to use the roll like this to kind of uncover those, because like I said, they're usually indented a little bit. So let's do the same up here. I love this piece here. I, I swear this does not look like it was hit. It looks like this piece didn't quite fit the way that fit, and they just hammered it to make it fit. Uh, there is a little bit of a dent here, but I don't, well, maybe there is a little something here. But, oh well. Maybe it is. I'll have to take a quite close look at that because uh, I did make this piece sized for that. And I think I gave myself some extra material. But if we need a little more flange, and if this is bent and needs to come out, we can certainly take care of that on our rear valence. But, you know, this is where that filler piece is going to go. And uh, this feels pretty smooth. There's a little bit... It feels like maybe a tiny bit of a dent that's a little bit different from the radius. And I can't see much from back here. Maybe just a tiny bit. So there might have been a little bit of a hit right here, and that did fold that up. So. Oh, it's got a power meter. Actually, that'll help. Nice. Huh, that worked good with the with the belt pin. Well, you know, I didn't do the best. Looks like I lost a little bit here and some there. And there's some seam sealer. So I'll need to uh, fix that up a little bit. It's a big deal fixing that flange up. A little tiny piece of metal will weld in there. But let's go ahead and move our way up here. All right, so basically we're gonna come through, we're gonna clean up this flange. I did cut two spots in it, so I'll put a little bit of bridge metal in. We'll get this flange nice and repaired. I'm also gonna pull out this area here on our valence. Looks like there was, I do believe this was a minor accident now that I see it. It looks like there's just a tiny bend there. Bend there. So we'll pull that out, get that nice and matching the radius and then we'll check our metal size and then we'll come in and start welding in once your flan's done. So I'll do a lot of this cleanup off camera because it's boring and I'm gonna save some battery and cards. All right, as you can see, we've done some cleanup of our flange. It's not perfect here. We did pound this out a little bit and try to straight that radius out. I think we did all right on it, enough to proceed. Fortunately, I did cut this kind of long so we've got plenty of room and we've got plenty of extra on it. So what we're going to do, as you can see on this one, I've added our drain hole. What we're going to do is go ahead and get these in place. You're probably looking at these holes that I've drilled. So what I did is I kind of mocked these up and then I went from behind with a Sharpie and drew a line where this flange went. And then I went along that line and I drilled some holes. So what we'll do is spot weld hole these areas and then we'll come through 
So it'll sit like that. Then we'll come through and cut down in here, weld along the top, cut the side away, and we won't weld anything there until we get this one on. And then hopefully they join up nice, uh, close enough that we can weld the seam. And uh, very similar on this one, we have uh, holes drilled where our flange goes as well. So pretty simple. So we'll go ahead and work on getting these installed first, and then we can work on cutting out and doing this filler piece and our piece that goes up here. So for right now, I think what we're ready to do is start at least doing the uh, spot welds, and then we'll come along and do our cuts. So one thing we're gonna do with our cutoff wheel is uh, as we come in and do those cuts after we get these spot welded on, um, I've got a 1 32nd uh, thickness cutoff wheel that I'm gonna use instead of the normal 1 16th. I especially bought those to make thinner cuts on sheet metal cuts. We'll see how they work. I'm curious to see how prone the breakage they are. Uh, I almost never break the other ones, so we'll see if I break these, but let's uh, start off by getting these welded in. All right, let's get this lined up kind of where we want it. Let's see if we can get one of these on it. Well, that's not exactly where we want it. Oh, the car needs to move. That's cool. There we go. We can do that one right there. Let's make sure this is level and is about where we want it. I think that's pretty good. So we can go ahead and do that one, that one, and then work our way down. Looks like we did pretty decent lining those up. All right. So one thing you got to look out for as well is there's a lot of seam sealer in here. So chip away as much of that as you can because it does like to catch fire and uh, it smells pretty bad when it burns. So. All right, so of course we've left the material here, so we'll need to come in and cut that with our cutoff wheel before we can weld this on. And uh, the only thing that's a little bit not so great, and I think you can see it with this camera, you can see that cut line there is awfully close to that uh, hole. And that hole, I'm sure some sort of grommet goes there. Um, I don't know what goes through there, or if anything, or if it's just a drain hole, but um, we're probably gonna damage that uh, with the weld, so the weld very cool. We'll want to do is weld against the thicker sheet metal and up into that. Um, but in the meantime, we're looking pretty decent so far. So let's see how this piece fits up. Yeah, a little bit of a gap there, but nothing we can't fill. that cool off and that'll help locate this piece. Now we've got extra flange here, which we're going to end up having to cut away. But like I always say, I'd rather have extra than not. Even down the here, this is quite a bit of excess. This is a little cut a little more close to how the original body would have gone. Um, but we can always add a little here if we need to. But 
I don't think that we have to. I think what I did is I left extra here that we'll end up trimming. Again, I always like trimming more than I like adding, but you can do either or, but always leave it so you can tr trim rather than add is uh, gonna make your life easier. Now, if you're wondering why I didn't do this one, which I think you can see, if you're wondering why I didn't do this one, the flange actually gets cut and goes up in. Um, the flanges on these pieces often have like a beveled end, so they don't go completely to each other. So there's a little bit of a gap in flange there, which is no big deal. Again, there's a tiny bit of a gap on our inner structure here, uh, which is gonna be covered by our outer panel anyway, but I'll probably go ahead and stitch that and fill it in, should be fine. Excited because look how thin that is compared to the uh, 16th inch one. I don't know how easy that shows up on camera, but it's half the thickness and this one's worn down. And the method that we showed you before, we would go a little bit at a time. Um, I see less of a reason to do that here because we've got all these spot welds holding these in. These panels aren't going anywhere. So I feel like we should just come in and cut away what we want and then come in and weld it. So let's see how this cuts. So nice thing about this welding helmet, it's got a little switch up here. As long as I remember to flip it, I can put it on grind and cut or weld. So. Looks like our cut line is working really well. We can line these, these panels up and get them tacked. Um, what I think I'm gonna do is cut in here and let the thinness of the blade cut between these two pieces, which we can then weld together. It would only be a 1 seconds gap. And then after I weld this piece in, I'll be able to come in up this side and cut this one. This one's gonna be a little harder. It's a pretty constant curve, so we're gonna have to do it's actually a little harder to do curves with these things without, without putting a lot of stress on the blade. That's probably going to be hot. Let's see. Ah. Nope, it's not hot. And there was a little section holding it. So here's that back piece that we just cut off. So now... There's nothing keeping us from welding this together, and it's actually starting to come in nicely. It's a little warm. Nice and even. Let's go ahead and get some tacks taken care of. So I'm going to change my visor back to weld. We're going to do some low volts on this one, because this is super thin sheet metal. And let's see if we can get this started. All right, looks like we're pretty good right here. Ah, I should turn it on. fire flame up there and this is all uh, weld through primer here remember we always like to use the weld through primer as long as we remember
All right, that's one piece put in. Let's go ahead and work on this one. So same deal on this one. We should be ready to just go ahead and cut it and get it in. Probably should have taken this bumper support off. But we got it. All right, and there we go. There's our pieces. And we can now pull this straight and get it welded. All right, so we're doing some, some welding here. Really gotta let this cool down. So we're gonna let it cool down, finish stitching it up, do some grinding on it, and we'll have this piece done, and we'll work on the next piece shortly. All right, so I've cut out where this piece is gonna go, and it fits relatively good. Remembering that it is gonna be on the inside, but visible from behind the tire, so we're gonna do our best to make it nice. All right, now that we've got it kind of tacked in right about where we want it, I want to go ahead and bend this over a little bit with our hammer. So let's grab our dolly. I do want to support behind it. So I welded fairly heavily along here to kind of give me a lot to grind to and kind of put those two pieces together. And you shouldn't be able to see it from the other side. You see a nice seam, but it's all behind the wheel well lip. And actually it looks pretty good just by looking at it. So that's pretty much it for this piece. I guess I might have missed tacking that one in, that little corner piece, but uh, it went in just like the other. So pretty much all we got to do now is grind a bunch of stuff down. And let it cool.
All right, and here we go. All done. I'll have to do a little bit of trimming down here. And this flange is a little bit big, so we'll need to trim this to match the wheel well flange here, but not a huge deal. Now all we gotta do, come in here and clean this up. And let's get some rust encapsulator on this. Let it cure overnight. And then we'll see what we can do tomorrow. All right, so that's all we're gonna do on this video. This was just an opportunity for us to show you again how you can fix some existing rust on your car by cutting up and forming a few simple pieces. Now that we've got that done, we're gonna go ahead and clean up the rest of this in here. We're gonna put on some rust encapsulator, let that cure, and then we can go ahead and move on. We have one other thing we need to do. I do still need to make this little piece here, but I can't really do that until I'm test fitting the quarter panel, so we'll make that alongside the quarter panel. But I'd like to go ahead and clean this up, get that rust encapsulator encapsulator on to cure and then next time we're out working we'll be working on fitting the quarter panel we'll leave you with a little view of that rust encapsulator and a quick test fit of the quarter panel to show you what's in store for the next video So hopefully you enjoyed this video. Definitely check us out. Drop us a subscribe and a like if you enjoyed it. And uh, we'll see you here again next time.